Google Play Music is dead. So I'm gonna show you how to make your own cloud music locker next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. So, do you remember when music lockers were all the rage? Years ago, we had La La, Amazon Music, iTunes Match. Everyone was doing a music locker, including Google, with Google Play Music. And personally, I got in on the ground level with Google Play Music from day one, and I loved the music locker approach. It actually integrated the music locker, that's the music that you uploaded to your cloud library, in with their search results of their online music library. So it was very seamless. It was awesome. And now it's dead. Yes, you've probably already heard Google has killed Google Play Music and is transitioning actively everybody over to YouTube Music. Now, if you had a, a cloud storage of your uploaded music on Google Play Music, it's going to reside now in YouTube Music. But I find the process on YouTube Music in the app to be just kind of unbearable for me. It's really clunky, it's not easy to use, I just don't like it. And so I thought, why not uh, take this into my own hands, take matters into my own hands and see if I can own my cloud music storage. So today I'm gonna show you how to export your music out of Google's takeout feature, which is if you uploaded music to Google Play Music, you can only get it now through Google Takeout. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we're gonna set up, and it's a quite a process, set up Plex and PlexAmp. I have an NVIDIA Shield TV as my Android TV. It works as a Plex server that's always connected to the internet. So I'm gonna do the hard work of taking that data dump from Google, turning it into a format that Plex likes, and then uploading it and setting Plex up so that I own my cloud locker going forward. It's a cool process. I should mention that in order for you to do this and use the app PlexAmp, it is part of the Plex Pass subscription. That costs $4.99 per month, or you can pay a lifetime subscription fee of $120. I have the lifetime subscription, um, so that's why I'm using this, but you should definitely look into it. There, there's a lot of features with Plex Pass. Uh, check out plex.tv slash plex dash pass, and you can get a sense of everything Plex Pass has to offer. All right, let's get started first with Google Takeout. First things first, you wanna download your uploaded tracks right away. And the only way to do this right now is through Google's takeout tool. Head to takeout.google.com slash settings slash takeout. Google Takeout is a powerful tool that lets you download an insane amount of your data direct from Google, not just music data, all your data. But I'm gonna deselect all of them and then scroll down to find just Google Play Music and then just select that. That's all we're dealing with today. That opens up the multiple formats button, which if I click that, you can see there's a variety of data that's exportable here. It includes playlists, radio stations, track metadata, and the biggie, for me anyways, audio files in MP3 format. So I'm going to scroll down and click next step. And this is where you decide how you want to receive all of this data. Now, I had a link emailed to me, but you can have them added automatically to your Google Drive account or Dropbox, OneDrive or Box if you prefer. And then you can decide the type of archive, which I chose zip, um, but this one's really important. File size per file. I chose four gigs, and I'll talk about why that's important in a second. Uh, then you just tap to create export, and you wait. And once the archive is ready, you'll get an email like I did, and you just follow the instructions to retrieve all of those files from there. 
Now a word of caution. You know how I mentioned the four gigs per file that I selected just a few seconds ago. Uh, I ended up with 19 separate zip files, which made it kind of a challenge to unzip and, uh, you know, way more complicated than it really needed to be. I probably could have expanded that to a larger file size. So consider that my warning to you. You might really consider what the file size needs to be depending on the file, the size of your library, especially uh, because you might just be doing a little bit more work that's unnecessary if you choose too small of a file. Okay, so now what do I have? I have a folder after I've unzipped all these files with an insane amount of music. None of it's sorted into folders uh, themselves, CSV files sprinkled throughout with playlist information, metadata. This is indeed a messy export, uh, but I assumed, hey, it's, it's better than nothing, right? Now, like I said, I have my Plex server running on my NVIDIA Shield TV, and I normally have a USB hard drive plugged into that device with my video media storage on it. So what I want now is to move the music onto the hard drive so it can be served up from there. But I'm gonna caution you, don't do this yet. Continue watching, because I ran into a speed bump. But what I did is created a music folder on my drive and moved my entire library over into it. Uh, all of that unsorted information and those files, I just moved it all in there and plugged that drive into my NVIDIA Shield TV. So when I did that, I set then set everything up in Plex to look at those music files, which is a process that I'm going to show you in a moment. But after a very long import process, Plex was churning through all those files. What I saw in Plex after it was all done was unusable. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. What is it that makes LastPass so unique and vital for your business? IT and security leaders can take back control of password security. They'll have the control they need from a central dashboard. Businesses can customize admin privileges, ensuring that any given admin has only the right level of access, and you'll gain company-wide visibility that shows you actual progress. Leverage over 100 policies and advanced security features. Visit LastPass.com com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. I got a single various artist entry with every song in my 10,000 song library in an unknown album. The tags in the files obviously weren't being recognized properly when I did this. In fact, so many songs were in that single album <laughs> that it effectively crashed my Plex app on the NVIDIA Shield TV. And that's just not going to work. So I did check in with Plex. They verified to me that this unstructured data dump isn't enough to make it play nice with Plex. Plex support says that the music files need to be placed into a folder structure that denotes artists and albums uh, for the import to work effectively. And that's something that a manual process, it can take a lot of time if you've got a lot of albums, a lot of artists. So then let's get these files into the right structure easily to work with Plex now. So I plugged my hard drive back into my MacBook Pro and launched the Apple Music app. And if you go preferences and then files, you want to be sure that keep music media folder organized is toggled to on. Also, copy files to music media folder when adding to library. I left that on as well, as we'll be adding all of these files to the library. It's best to select a drive location that actually makes sense on your machine so that you can house this copy of your music files. So you are creating another copy of everything. It's just going to be structured. Now I'm going to keep them on my MacBook Pro hard drive for now and hit OK. And then I'll find the folder with all of my music from Google Takeout, that raw folder of audio file dump, and then drag that into the Apple Music interface to start the import process into the Apple Music library. And this might actually take a while. It's going through and it's importing every track in that folder one by one. But in the end, you'll be rewarded with an organized music library at the end of the process. All files are now by artist and then by album, just the way Plex is going to like it. So then I'm going to go ahead and copy this new set of files, folders and all to my external hard drive again into a new folder. I'm going to plug that once it's done into my Shield TV for Plex to see. So I'm going to locate the folder with my new music hierarchy and then drag that onto my external hard drive where I want Plex to actually get to it from. And once again, I'm going to wait. Now, once all that media is finally stored on my hard drive, 
I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my NVIDIA Shield TV and fire it up. And now on my computer in a browser, this is how you manage Plex. I'm going to go to app.plex.tv slash desktop and log into my account. So you're going to need a Plex account at this point. Go to settings and then down to manage libraries. What we're going to do is create a music library. So add library and then select music, of course. And now we'll browse for the folder with all of that structured music data in it and click to add that. Make sure before you click out of here entirely that you go down to the advanced tab because there's a few things you need to set here. I'm going to activate prefer local metadata so it opts for that over whatever it's trying to do now. Down in genres, I'll select embedded tags and album art. I'm going to opt for both Plex Music and local files to fill hopefully any gaps that are found. And then I click to add to the library. And this is going to kick off yet another somewhat time-consuming process of importing all that media into the Plex realm. It's creating metadata as it does this. Now, I'm going to make sure and keep this NVIDIA Shield TV running so this process can finish. Depending on the size of the library, it can take quite a while. And once that process is complete, I'm going to load a fresh instance of Plex on my NVIDIA Shield TV. I'm going to launch it up. And once it's loaded, I'm going to jump down to the new music tab that appears there. And voila, everything I downloaded from Google Takeout is now imported, organized, and ready to play. I had to say it looks really nice. Because of the settings that I selected at import, any tracks and albums that didn't have any embedded artwork is imported automatically through Plex's import process. It's very graphical, super easy to maneuver through. And best part, it's always running on my NVIDIA Shield TV with the Plex server running on it at all times. So this music is available to me on my devices from the cloud that I just created. So let's do this final step and check out Plex Amp on my phone. Now I've installed the Plex Amp app from the Google Play Store on my Pixel 4 XL. And once I've logged in using my Plex credentials, I will be asked which a music library I wish to use. And of course I choose the music library that I just set up. And little pause and that's it. I'm in. My music library is accessible from wherever I might be. I can, of course, play albums, play tracks from the Plex Amp app. I can also download them for offline listening and just load them up on my phone so that they're stored there. This is my music, so I can do it very easily. I could cast them to a speaker in my home if I so choose. There's even an option of creating some dynamic stations, some playlists, uh, kind of like radio stations that take your library and automatically create these playlists based on mood, genre, decade, and a whole bunch of more options, uh, all based entirely on the library that you've uploaded. Honestly, Plex Amp is a very cool perk of Plex Pass. And the best part is I don't have to worry about Google taking away my music locker anymore. I own the music locker and it's mine for keeps. So there you have it. I have to say, I wondered how easy this was going to be. It actually took me a couple of weeks. I had planned on doing this episode one week prior and just ran out of time. Um, so I'm happy that I stuck with it because now I own my music in the cloud and I don't have to rely on, at least in the case of YouTube music, I don't have to rely on their weird sorting, searching mechanism within that app. I just, I can't stand it. It makes me not want to use that app. Plex Amp, on the other hand, is all my music and just easy to access, sorted the way I want it to, very graphical, everything looks great. I'm really happy and it's always running on my NVIDIA Shield TV, so it's served to me anywhere I happen to be. Uh, whenever this pandemic lifts, that'll probably come in more handy. But for now, it's peace of mind and I'm happy about that. Send me your emails, your tips, tricks, thoughts on Android to hoa at twit.tv. You can also hit the website twit.tv slash hoa for hands on Android and uh, find all the ways to subscribe to the podcast there. You can also link out to YouTube and subscribe there if you like. Big thanks to John Ashley for editing this all together and getting it up on the web for you to watch and listen. And thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. 
Want more Twit? Well, check out Smart Tech Today. It's at twit.tv slash STT. It's the show where Matthew Casanelli and I cover everything there is to know about smart tech tech, it's automation, it's connected devices, it's smart home, it's all those goodies and so much more. We get the news, we get the latest devices, we do reviews, everything. You gotta check it out. Twit.tv slash STT for Smart Tech Today.